with this we can take up the questions in relation to what has been discussed in harmony in existence you know in the um, lectures of which we have just briefly mentioned the essence few points in yes the, in the chart on that expression of coexistence there is mention of fluid and lump so could you explain that little bit yeah we are using this fluid in a specific sense so we are using it to indicate the liquid which is used by the unit of bio order for its nurturing so that is how this connects you know the physical order is connected to the bio order so this fluid is a liquid which is used by the unit of bio order for its nurturing for example water for example juice this water this juice is used by the human body right for nurturing so when you are drinking water it is for the purpose of nurturing the human body nurturing your body similarly when you are taking a juice of any fruit for example it is a liquid which is used for nurturing the body of human being so that we are using you know word fluid for indicating such liquid and you can see that this fluid belongs to the physical order but it is used for nurturing the bio order mm. so in that sense it is an important you know thing that has to be understood that this liquid this fluid is getting converted into a part of the bio order the unit of bio order so when you drink water this water it belongs to the physical order but it is used by the body and becomes an integral part of the body right mm. which is an unit of bio order when you say lump lump is this collection of this molecular structures okay and it belongs to the physical order only so if you look at a rock for example you know a big rock so it is a collection of molecular structures right? big collection so this is what we are calling as lump if you look at the sea for example right sea is a lump of water right? water is a molecular structure and you have a huge collection of these molecular structures and that is what we are calling as sea so this liquid and lump this fluid and lump lump belongs to the physical order and remains in physical order when you say fluid it is a liquid which is used for nurturing the bio order the unit in bio order it can be a cell it can be a plant the animal body human body and so on mm -hmm. when we say uh, fluid uh, in normal terms we mean anything that flows so does air also come under this or is it only liquids i mean that way all that is used for nurturing you know uh, the body mm -hmm. um, can be termed as fluid so that is why i have defined that okay you no know, it is used for nurturing the bi unit of bio order mm -hmm. okay so if you look at the air for example this air is also belonging to the physical order mm -hmm. but it is used for nurturing the body of a unit of bio order mm -hmm. so in that sense we are using and mostly it is in the form of liquid mm -hmm. mostly it is in the form of liquid 
Okay. In fact, whenever you are even eating food, right? What you are doing is that you are taking that solid food and chewing it, right? Mm. And converting it into a liquid. And if it is too dry, you add some you know, water into it or something which makes it a paste kind of thing. So the basic idea is that it is something which is belonging to physical order, but which is used for nurturing the bio order. Yeah. Yes. We sometimes use this uh, word for space, shunya or nothingness. So what is this space? Is it really nothing? We are saying no activity also. <clears throat> Yeah, this is uh, very interesting, you know, to understand because a uh, lot of things have been said about this space and we tend to misinterpret it or misunderstand it. <clears throat> so let's look at that. So when you look at the unit, the units are you know, seen in the form of activity. So when we look at the body, there are a lot of activities going on in the body. When you look at the self, there are a lot of activities going on in the self. And we have tried to understand them when we were talking about the human being, right? Harmony in human being. So unit is activity, but space is no activity. This is very important. So when you look at the unit, you can see the unit in the form of activities. But when it comes to space, it is no activity. Right. Mm. Now this no activity has to be understood. So this space is no activity, <coughs> not an activity. That in Hindi it is called as Kriya Sunni, which essentially means which is not an activity. Or it is in brief called Sunni. So absence of activity. So it is absence of activity, but therefore it does not mean that it is not a reality. Mm. So this we have to understand. It is a reality, but it is not a thing. It is not a unit. It is not an activity. But we are so programmed, you know, that we always think that if there is something right <laughs> then it has to be an unit it has to be an activity so there are realities which are in the form of activity which is in the form of which are in the form of units but there is one reality which is in the form of no activity So it is not an activity, it is not an unit, it is not a thing. So when you say nothing, you have to put a hyphen in between, you know. No thing. <laughs> so it is not a thing. Therefore it is called nothing. It does not mean that it is not there, it is not a reality. Mm. But we, are so we have to slowly develop this capacity to see that there can be a reality which is not an activity, which is not a unit, which is not a thing. Mm. 
so what we are saying that the space is no activity which essentially means it is not an activity not an unit not a thing in that sense it is called nothingness and what it means is that it is not an thing it is not a unit it is not an activity it does not mean that it is not a reality so what essentially it means is that it is a reality but it is not a thing it is not a unit can we see this this is very important okay so there can be a reality which is not a thing which is not a unit which is not an activity so let's look at this you know let's think over it you know let's spend some time reflecting on it okay that here are things you know which are activity which are units but here is a reality which is not a thing which is not an activity which is not an unit and that is space till now we don't you know appreciate this space right as a reality we see this space right as an absence mm because we think that only units are the reality now what we are saying is that let's look at this the space is also a reality but it is not a thing it is not a unit it is not an activity it is not a thing no thing you know so how do we go about seeing space yes in fact <clears throat> this is very interesting you know that uh to see space you have to first try to see the self at least see the activities of the self and unfortunately today when we think that we are just the body we are not able to appreciate the self we are not able to appreciate the activity of the self and therefore we are not able to appreciate this space right the reality which is there at the base of all these units so if we try to see you know this is space are saying i am able to see the units but not the space right and how to see the space first we have to you know understand what is the meaning of see you know so before we respond to the question let us try to understand what do we mean when we say see it's not something that's visible to me yes so this visible means i am not able to see the form of it hmm the shape of it size of it so i am putting this condition that any reality to be there it has to have a form it has to have a shape it has to have a size when which in a sense i am saying it has to be an unit unit <laughs> right so let us look at this meaning of you know see so i have written here see means what the self is able to get about a particular reality so basic thing is the reality not the unit mm. you must appreciate this then we can see that see means what the self is able to get about this particular reality and this certainly depends upon the level of activity of the self through which the self is seeing you know or through which the seeing is done by the self so this is very interesting when we try to understand the self we see that there are different levels of activities of the self mm. 
right? Yeah. And when we are looking at some reality, we are looking at that reality from one or many of these levels of activity of the self. So when we are seeing the reality, we are seeing this reality from different levels of activity of the self. So depending upon which level of activity you are seeing the reality, so depending upon that level of activity through which this reality is seen, right, the meaning of C will become very different. I mean, I can recall, you all remember by now, that if you look at the activity of the self, one of the activity of the self is selecting and testing. The lowest level of activity of the self, selecting and testing. So when I'm seeing a particular reality, I may see it from the level of selecting and testing. So this is the level of activity of the self through which I am seeing the reality. And if I am seeing the reality through this particular level of activity of the self, I will see some aspect of the reality. I will see some aspect of the reality. So if I am accessing the sensation through the body and I am testing that sensation, then there are five things which I can access, access about that reality. So there is this sound, there is this touch, there is this taste, right? and the th sight, the taste, and the smell. So this lowest activity that's associated with this expectation is selecting and testing. And this selecting and testing, if I'm doing, you know, on the basis of sensation, for example, then I can access some information about that reality. And that information would be in terms of these five senses, right? In the form of these five senses. We are looking at the level of selecting and testing, we'll see certain aspect of the reality. If we are looking at, at the level of analyzing and comparing, we'll see some other aspects. If we are looking at it at the level of imaging and contemplation, we will see some more aspects of reality, right? And so on. So let us look at this example in case of selecting and testing. So when we are working at the level of, when we are working at the level of selecting and testing, then seeing would mean what we are able to perceive through testing, through five senses, right? Senses of sound, touch, sight, taste, and the smell. So this is the information that we are getting about that reality, right? Through these five senses, about sound, about touch, about sight, about taste, about smell, right? And one of these being the form of the unit. So what we see as form in the unit of the unit is a sight, right? Mm -hmm. So the sensation of sight So this form is a very small part of the description of that reality. Okay. Mm. So form is what we see through the sight, the sensation of sight, right? At the level of selecting and testing. So seeing the form of an unit is just a part of what we see through testing. And this itself is a part, right? Part mm. of these five levels of activity. Mm -hmm. So the total that I can see at the level of um, through the cell 
is see the reality through these five levels of activity of the self of which seeing through the selecting and testing is the lowest level of activity of the self right mm -hmm. so it is certainly less than one fifth of what we can see and when you are seeing only the form it is one fifth of what i can see through senses at the level of selecting and testing mm -hmm. so seeing the form of an unit is less than 1 by 25 right <laughs> of the total you know aspects of reality so can we see this yes that form is only a small part of the description of the reality mm. and when i am focusing on the fo on form <laughs> i am focusing on less than 1 by 25 part of the reality When you are saying that I'm able to see the units, but I'm not able to see the space, what you essentially mean that I'm not able to see the form of the space. Yes. Mm. So that is true. That is true. That this cell, this space is not an unit. So it has no defined size. Right. It has no limited size. It is unlimited. Therefore, you cannot see the form of it. But it does not mean that you cannot see that reality. Self has this capacity to see the form also. But it has the capacity to see beyond the form as well. Mm. So if you look at this activity of the self, okay, now, at the level of selecting and testing, I can see the form of the unit. At the level of analyzing and comparing, I can understand the effect of one unit on the other unit, what we are calling as property. Right. At the level of imaging and contemplation, I can see the purpose, the meaning, right. the relationship of the unit with other unit. At the level of determination and understanding, I can see the harmony, the self-organization of that unit. And at the level of realization and authentication, I can see the coexistence. I can see the space and I can see the submergence of the unit in space. Mm -hmm. So these are the possibilities of seeing the reality or different aspect of reality at different levels of our activity of the self. Right. So we are really not using most of the activities of the self. True, true. We are not even aware that the self is there. <laughs> that is our crisis, you know. And this is the crisis of the science today, you know, the whole modern civilization today or any civilization which is just focused on the world of material and not aware of the consciousness. Right? Mm. So it keeps itself limited to the form, at the most the property, which are important as far as units are concerned. But form and property is not the only description of the reality. Mm -hmm. The form is important, the property is important, but <clears throat> the purpose is also important. Right? The relationship is also important. And if you go deeper, this harmony is important, the self-organization is important. And ultimately, when you go still deeper, you can see this self is important, this space is you know, important. The submergence of that unit in space is also important. Yeah. And in fact, if you look at the traditions, you know, most of the traditions which have come to stay, you know, over thousands of years, they are saying that to be able to see this submergence, to see, to be able to see this undivided, right, the space, which is there in the mid of all these divided units, is what is knowledge, what is right knowledge. 
If you are not able to see this undivided in these divided units, you cannot see relationship. You cannot see harmony. You cannot see coexistence. Right. So the major emphasis in most of these traditions, the humanistic traditions, is that they are saying that let us look at the units which are divided, isolated, separated. But let us also look at this space which is undivided, which is all pervading. And in which every unit is there and every unit is related to each other. Every unit is self-organized, right? is in harmony in that space. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand the space, the all pervading, the undivided. And only then we can see the relationship between the units. Only then we can understand the harmony in the units and among the units. And we are able to see this undivided. Then we are able to see the relationship. And we can see that we are related to all, each and every unit. And therefore we can have the feeling of love. Right? And therefore we can have the compassion. So this coexistence, this undividedness, the submergence of units in space. You know, to see that is what is called as truth. And with that undividedness, seeing this undividedness, this submergence, this coexistence, one has this feeling of love and compassion. So this truth, love and compassion is the running thread of all the traditions in the world, whether East or West. Mm. So this undivided, this, you know, all pervading, this space has to be understood and submergence of unit in space has to be understood. And that is how we can understand the harmony and relationship. And that is how we can have this feeling of love and compassion, which is very basic, which is very fundamental for human being, right? Fundamental for human being for its, you know, state of continuous happiness and fundamental for ensuring the fulfillment or the completion of unfolding of coexistence up to the universal human order. So it is essential for human being, it is essential for the expression of coexistence. So this seeing has to be defined. So when you say you are not able to see the space, what you mean that you are not able to see the, see the form of the space. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that, yes, you are not able to see the form of space, but we as self has this possibility of seeing the space directly, right? By way of going up to the activity of realization. So at the level of realization, activity of realization, I can see the space and I can see the submergence of units in space. But even at the level of analyzing and comparing, mm. I can see the effect of one unit on the other unit, mm. right? Which are separated in space. Mm. So when you only look at the form, you see the space as absence, absence of units. Mm -hmm. But when you start looking at the level of, you know, analyzing and comparing, now you can see that, yes, there is a space in between one unit and the other unit, for example, between the sun and the earth. But the effect of sun can be seen at the level of earth. That means sun has some effect on earth. On earth. So space is not just the absence. Space is a reality through which this effect can be there. Right? Mm. But this is not something which you can see in the form of form, right? Yeah. So can you see this effect of sun on earth as a form, as a shape, as a size? 
Mm. No, but at the level of thought, you can see that yes. Yeah. When there is sun facing the earth, the earth is getting warm, right? Mm. So there is an effect. Mm. When it is not facing the sun, you know, that side of the earth is getting cool. That means it has an effect. But this we can think, you know, we can analyze, mm. we can compare and see that yes, this is space is something through which this effect of one unit on another unit can be seen. Similarly, when you start looking at things at the level of contemplation, not only that you see effect, but you also see the relationship, that things are related. And because they are related, there is an effect. Mm -hmm. If you go deeper at the level of understanding, you can see that these units are related to each other. And they are self-organized. They are in harmony you know, at the level of their own self. So the earth is in self-organized state. The sun is in a state of self-organization, in a state of harmony. A tree, while it is related to the soil, but it is an unit which is self-organized, which is in harmony as a tree. And if you go still deeper at the level of realization, you can see that this tree is in space. It is submerged in space. Right? It is self-organized in space. It is recognizing its relationship with the soil, which is in space. Right? So through space, it is able to recognize its relationship with other units in space. So all this is happening, right? And I can understand each of these things. I can see each of these things as I, you know, evolve myself to higher and higher level of activities of the self. And that essentially is the process of development of the self, evolution of the self. That I am becoming aware of, you know, my own activities of the self, higher and higher level of activities of the self. So that is why we started with the human being, you know, which is a unit which we interact, you know, every day. We ourselves are the you know, human being. Then we talked about family, then society, then nature. And finally, we are talking about this, you know, coexistence or existence. So before talking about this coexistence, about the space, you know, of units being submerged in space, we have spent a lot of time trying to evolve our level of activity of the self. So with this evolved level of activity of the self, we'll be able to see the relationship, which an indicator, first we have to see the effect of one unit on the other, indicating mm -hmm. that space is not something which is absent, right? but it is a reality through which effect can travel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or in which this effect is taking place in one unit from another unit then we can see the relationship between the units in space. We can see the harmony of units in space. And ultimately we can see the space and the submergence of units in space at the level of realization. Mm. So now when you say C, this C has to be you know, understood. So I can go back and read this. C means what the self is able to get about a particular reality. This certainly depends upon the level of activity of the self through which this seeing is done. Mm -hmm. So this C is not a very simple word, you know, just indicating that what you see as the form, right? Form is one part of it. So I can see the form, I can see the property, I can see the relationship, the purpose in relationship. I can see the harmony, the self-organization of the unit. And ultimately, I can see the submergence, the space and the submergence of units in space. Mm. So we have to evolve. And when we evolve, we can at least see the effect, the relationship, the self-organization of the unit. And when we can go a little higher, we can see the submergence, submergence of units in space, the coexistence. And we can see the space also directly. Yeah.
Yes, so we can realize this space. Yes, so all this testing, comparing, contemplating, understanding and realization, all of them, you know, are the different levels of seeing things. Yes. Yeah, we have to do a lot of work. <laughs> yes, that is what we have been trying to do, you know. So I was saying that what we are responding, you know, is at the level of the foundation course on universal human values. You know. So just an introductory course. Once we are introduced to these basic concepts and we are working on ourselves, then we have this higher course, you know, we are understanding human being and the existence in more detail. And once we understand the human being and this nature and this existence, then we have to work out a lot of details about our behavior, our conduct, about our society, about our you know, systems. So we'll have higher and higher courses. Right. But this is just the beginning, just the foundation work is being done. And we are trying to look at the human being, ourself, look at different activities of the self. And through these activities of the self, we are trying to see the reality, the units, the nature, the existence, the space, all that. So we have to evolve our own self, our levels of activity of the self, so that we can see the reality in more and more detail and ultimately in its completeness. Yes, true. We have heard about Dvaitvad, Jad Chetan, and Tretvad, Ishwar, Jeev, Prakriti. Yes. The first proposes that there exists only material and conscious, while the second proposes that apart from the two mentioned above, there exists a higher level of consciousness which is termed as Ishwar. Yes. This is called higher level of consciousness because human consciousness is much lower and has limited ability to understand. So he is asking it would be interesting to have thoughts on this. Yeah, you know, interestingly, if you look at the whole Indian uh, tradition, okay, <clears throat> there is a lot of discussion about this existence. You know, what really exists. Okay. And there are many uh, systems of philosophy which have been proposed and out of that there are six systems of philosophies which have been uh, in place you know, and which have been accepted widely. Right? So six you know, different uh, kind of darshan, you know, it is called darshan. Right? Uh, in English it is called philosophy. Uh, I will not go into the details of difference between the two, but I will take them as synonymous for the time being and sometime we'll discuss about the difference also. So the six systems of darshan um, have been there in use, right? what is known as Vedic darshans. So we have this sank and we have this yog, then we have Purmimansa and the Uttarmimansa. And this Uttarmimansa is what is called as Vedant. You know, and then we have this Nyaya and Vaisesik. And they are trying to describe about the different aspects of the reality. And then within this, each of this philosophy, each of the darshan, there are many, you know, divisions. And divisions at the level of details. Then we have this you know, one of the prominent and two of the prominent systems of uh, thought is uh, we have this both darshan and we have this Jain darshan. So six plus two, you know, eight, which have been prominent. And then we have uh, other systems of thoughts which have not been qualified or called as darshan, but we have so many of them, many of them, varieties of them. And all of them have been given a place. They have been given a place 
they are respected and there is an ongoing dialogue between them you know, or among them so this shastra is something which is supposed to be a very uh, kind of valuable thing to do so this communication between these different ways of looking at things or different looking at different descriptions of reality but uh, what we would do in response to what uh, vinay chetri is asking uh, is that just broad you know briefly discuss about this dwait and prayat you know and advait okay, these are three you know prominent words so we have this dwait and we have this prayat and we have this advait and as i said you know variety of them lot of these discussions have been uh, taking place and you know in detailing they seem to be very uh, different sometime even opposing okay. but if you look at them in a sense okay, there does not seem to be you know uh, very really much difference okay. so let me describe what essentially they are trying to say number one they are saying that this is the broad difference or category of reality one is that of unit and the other is that of space which essentially says that one set of it is activity and the other is no activity and we must understand both we must understand both the activity and no activity so one term which is used is purus and prakriti so prakriti is activity and purus is no activity okay. now if you are taking looking at them as two different things two different set of realities okay then it is called dwait dwait means dwell there are two so there is prakriti and there is purus so this is one category which is defined here some people will say that oh yes there are two different things two different reality but they coexist right they are not separate they are two different realities but they are not separate they coexist right so there is no opposition so advait that they are coexisting they are not separate they are not isolated so there is no opposition between the two dwand dwand is this position so there is no opposition between the two so we have dwait and we have advait dwait means this activity and no activity the prakriti and purus are two different set of reality this is dwait but they coexist right they are in harmony they are in coexistence that is advait then some people said that okay look at this activity and these activities are of two types right these activities are of two type one is the material activity and the other is the activity of consciousness so we have this material and this consciousness you know, units so we have jad and we have chaitan so when you look at this now we have three types of reality we have this material units we have this consciousness unit and we have this space right which is no activity so the one division is between activity and no activity and this activity is further divided into material activity and the consciousness activity so now it becomes a threat so this is how the dwait advait and threat can be understood but this is not the only way it is defined okay 
I mean, I am giving one description which we can understand, right? From the perspective of what we have been trying to explore till now. But there are a lot of variations. There are a lot of variations. For example, one variation is that it is said that you know there is this material units and there is this unit of consciousness. And if you look at this unit of consciousness, it has you know higher possibilities of evolution. And when you evolve to the higher possibility of consciousness, right, you can come to the level of this super consciousness, right? And when you come to this level of super consciousness and what we are calling as realization, right, you can have the realization of coexistence and you can have the realization of space, the space which is all pervading. So when you evolve to that level of realization, and you can realize this space, the all-pervading. You can identify yourself with that all-pervasiveness. You can identify yourself with that all-pervasiveness. And not identifying yourself to limited things. So when you are able to identify yourself with that all-pervasiveness, this all-pervading space, right? this unlimited space. That identification, in that state of identification, you can see the units in a space. Right? And you can see that you are related to all the units in a space. So that realization is very important. Right? So there you can see the relationship. You have this feeling of love, feeling of compassion. So that state of consciousness is called super consciousness. Right. And you are identified with that space, the all pervading. So you are in a much you know higher state of being. You, know, you are in a state of bliss, in a state of super bliss, and all those things. Right? So that Realization of space and the realization of submergence in space, realization of this coexistence of harmony of relationship, all this is that state of super consciousness. And from there, it has been, you know, said that that space, this all pervading, you know, can be called as a state of super consciousness. So when you are saying consciousness, which remains, you know, which is, uh, you know, kind of uh, the highest stage, higher level of or highest level of consciousness is called Ishwar. So this, I know many of the descriptions are there. I mean, I'm not going to the details of it. You can read some of them, you know, we have uh, uh, Dwayat and we have Vishista Dwayat and, you know, Dwayta Dwayat and so many descriptions are there. But in essence, I can say that these are the three basic levels of description. One is focusing only on the units, the activity. Second is focusing on units and the space, the no activity. Third is when looking at the activity, subdividing this activity in the form of material, activity of material and activity of consciousness. So when you are seeing this uh, as activity and no activity, it is called Advait. When you are able to see that the activity and no activity coexist, they are in harmony, they are in coexistence, not in isolation, then it is Advait. And when you are subdividing this activity into activity of material and consciousness, along with no activity, the space, the all pervading, then it will be a threat one. So what we are describing as existence can be called threat one in the sense that we are describing about the three reality, the material, the consciousness activity, and the space. 
It can also be called as dwet if we are thinking in terms of activity and no activity. And when we are saying coexistence you know, of the activity and no activity, the units and the space, then it can also be called as adwet. Yes. But let me clarify one thing. Sir. Purush and Prakriti and these are, you know, used in very different senses also. You know, because there's a whole lot of evolution of thought in India, you know, thousands of years of explorations have been made, you know. So uh, I'm, uh, when I'm saying Purush means the space, the, you know, all pervading and the Prakriti means the activities, you know, the units. You know. Uh, I'm referring to one particular, you know, uh, system uh, of thought, but there has been a whole lot of descriptions, you know, and detailing. Okay. So sometime when we get into this Vedic Darshans, you know, uh, we will try to do that sometime, you know, uh, spend some time looking into each one of them. Then we'll see the, you know, exact differences. But I have taken this uh, particular meaning, you know, starting from the fact that in reality there is space and there is unit which are in space. So uh, I uh, just refer to these words in Purush and Prakriti. But in many systems of thought, they are used in different sense also. So we should keep it open. But in a sense, what is being said is that, yes, there is unit, there are units and there is space and these units are in space. And they are of two different types. So in that sense, I have used this word Purusha and Prakriti, but it has many connotations. The whole things have, you know, evolved over a long period of thousands of years. So that we have to keep in mind. In fact, uh, in India, it has evolved not only in terms of time, or even in terms of space, you know, in different parts of the country, people have investigated, you know, from different angle. You know. And at some time it has been integrated, a whole lot of work has been done. So all that we have to look into, but I'm not going into the details of that. But I will keep myself open regarding that. Namaste, Ganesh Ji. Namaste, Namaste. I bend before you, rather bow before you. Because know, so much of uh, what you call pieces of and possibilities of exploration. I think tomorrow, if we can de dedicate the day for only for clarifying this particular point of existence, coexistence will be wonderful. It will become a completeness. Yeah. And uh, it is now very easy for me, though it is a very hard uh, I mean, it is, I find now so easy to understand the, yes. the human is placed or positioned in this nature. The, I don't believe in who created, I'm not worried who created human and all the things, but the purpose of creating human being, I think it was predicting a gap in the system a gap, a possibility of gap in the coexistence. And instead of we understanding the, what you call the purpose of creation, we are really breaking that existence. That is what human beings are doing it. I don't know whether I was able to, the language I use has its own limitation. So I don't know whether I am able to convey my, my, my imagination to you. So that's okay, whether you got it or not, that's okay. But as a human being, I have one thing to uh, put forth. There is something called limit to progress that is called you know, sustainability, pro pro sustainability. We call it, no, we learn it as a sustainability, progress with regard to progress. So there should also be a sustainability factor to knowledge, sustainable knowledge. There is a limit to knowledge also. 
and the human is sent to or creator of place in the universe not for keeping on exploring knowledge there there are also other purpose so looking at space and or looking at the units fixing the priority should i look at the space or should i look at the prior look at the units if we, if uh, our mission is to break the sustainable knowledge we look at the space if our mission is to live and finish and leave the place live here and leave the place i think uh, these are two words live here and leave the place you know then better we look at units i think uh, can i get a reflection from you before i take you yeah ask in fact if you try to look at the units only then we are in trouble if you try to look at the space only then also we are in trouble what we have to see is the units in space units submerged in space and when we look at the units submerged in space our focus is basically the relationship the harmony the coexistence then things would change so this is one thing that we have been doing you know in tradition we have been focusing on units and particularly the material units then we have another traditions which have been focusing on space the all pervading and over emphasizing it okay but of course we have traditions which have been trying to focus on this coexistence on this advait thing focusing on the units submerged in space focusing on the coexistence focusing on harmony focusing on relationship right then we can see <clears throat> that yes there is relationship there is harmony there is coexistence right and we need to understand it so we need to understand the units we need to understand the space we need to understand the units submerged in space and by understanding this we can understand the relationship between the units we can see the harmony in each and every unit and <clears throat> this is based on this coexistence we can see and if we can see the relationship and harmony and be with that relationship and harmony and the coexistence it will be fulfilling for us fulfilling for others and fulfilling for everyone so the problem is not you know focusing on unit or problem focusing on space the problem is that we are not able to focus on unit so much in space we are not able to focus on coexistence and therefore we are not able to focus on relationship and harmony and therefore we are not able to have this feeling of relationship and harmony and we are not able to live in relationship and harmony that is the crisis so what we need to do is to focus on units in space units submerged in space that is we have to focus on coexistence and if we focus on coexistence and understand the coexistence then we'll be able to understand the relationship and the harmony better and then we'll be able to live in relationship and harmony which will be fulfilling for us and for everyone else and this is what is going to be sustainable you know the sustainability is not just survival i understand sustainability means surviving with all possible expansion right that vastness which is there you know so i keep saying that this man you know the human being is on the one side you know his body is on the ground right and his his self is trying to you know fly in this sky both are important to have the feet on the ground you have to understand the material world right but to fly in the sky you have to understand the consciousness and you have to understand the space where you can fly you know so that space is already there it is already available to you right and you can fly 
fly to the unlimited you know sky so both are important both are important and sustainability means i can sustain myself in this existence in a manner you know of relationship harmony and coexistence which is already there right it is sustaining itself we don't have to sustain it we only have to understand this sustainability and be with it we only have to understand this coexistence this harmony this relationship and be with it it is already sustaining itself it is also sustaining us the problem is that this human being without understanding this vast you know reality of coexistence harmony and relationship right it is trying to run things on its own way without understanding it that is the problem otherwise the existence is sustaining itself anyway this coexistence this harmony this relationship is sustaining itself and it is also sustaining the human being so we don't have to sustain it you know it is sustaining us we only have to understand it and be with it then it will be a sustainable model it is already a sustainable model the crisis is with the human being not with the existence thank you so existence is there it is ever present okay we are only a part of it we are you know being in the process of becoming we have to understand this you know and we have to understand this process of becoming and we have to be with it that is the sustainable model i am getting into that i think further exploration definitely is required but we have been talking about activities yes uh, activity reality existence and all the thing so uh, i think we have not defined the activity is it can i assume activity as you know exchange of energy can i do it can i can i believe that way see you can directly observe what activity is for example you are thinking it is an activity but is energy is involved in that you are asking a question it is an activity but is energy involved in that in fact energy you know is more distant concept you know is something uh, activity is something which you can directly observe i can observe i just wanted yes. to know what is the role of energy in activity i mean for me this question of what is an activity is directly answerable as compared to energy if i ask you what is energy it will become more difficult if i ask you what is an activity and if i ask you whether the thinking is an activity or not you can say yes i can see that i am thinking and i am calling it as an activity energy is more subtle so if you are using this energy to explain activity we are making it more complicated see many things we have you know we have used the terms and we think that we are you know able to understand that's not always true there may be certain terms which are quite in use but which we have not understood Correct. and when you say understand it means i am able to see this you know reality that is the meaning of understanding ultimately correct so when i understand activity i mean i can see the activity myself and say that yes this is what it is i can see that reality so all these you know issues have to be opened up correct. definitely i 